I have made a last minute decision to attend Origins this year and I thought maybe there are a bunch of you in the same boat. You uh, decided maybe two, three days out that actually you can pull all of the resources together and you can make Origins happen this year. So I wanted to do a quick video about how you go about making sure everything is set up and you have a good time at Origins. I've never really done that. I also don't do a ton of actual planned events at um, Origins. I tend to work it and hang out with friends and plan more casual than rather than like official things. So let's see what we can get together now. So you've decided to go to Origins. There's got to be some logistics you've got to figure out first, some of the major ones, which may have made your decisions to go in the first place, but you've got to get to Origins. So you got to figure out train, car, uh, road tripping with friends, flying, whatever you want. However you need to get to Origins, you got to figure that out first and buy your flights. Uh, secondly, Origins hasn't sold out, so you can still get a ticket. So you should do that. And thirdly, you got to figure out where you're going to stay. And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of hotels. I'm sure if you went a few more blocks outside of the convention center area, there's going to be a bunch of hotels for you to stay at. If you're struggling figuring out really what hotel is good or where to stay at, there is an unofficial um, Origins Discussion Facebook group that is wonderful. Those people are really there to help you figure things out and plan your trip if you're really stuck and you don't know. Some of them might even have a room to spare or are looking for roommates, so that's an option you can do. So those are the three things you've got to figure out. You got to get a badge, you got to get transportation, and you've got to get accommodation. So then once you've got those things down, the fun thing starts. So the main part of this video, I really wanted to talk about um, what you're going to be doing at Origins if you didn't plan anything ahead of time. Hopefully you're going with somebody. If you're going with someone already, Origins is going to be really fun for you. I always feel that Origins is more of the show where I interact with people and friends, spend time with, uh, with them doing unorganized play where I'm just kind of like doing a lot of pickup games and a lot of impromptu sessions rather than like a strictly planned out schedule. But say that you wanted to get a couple of things on your schedule and you ha wanted to have an idea of the things that you could do for sure if you didn't have a ticket to an event. So let's talk about that. So I'm currently, I'm flying out tomorrow night. It's Sunday night, I'm flying out Monday at midnight. So I'm arriving at Origins on Tuesday morning. And let's take a look at the current event schedule and see what tickets are left. Maybe we can buy a couple of things last minute um, and still get into it. So let's have a look. Okay, well, strike that. Turns out Origins does not show you what tickets are left for events or which ones are sold out, which is really strange. So you can't buy tickets anymore at this stage, which is also really strange. Um, it looks like pre-reg closed like two-ish weeks ago, which seems really strange because you can spy, you can still buy tickets to events on site. Like they have the technology to show you what events are sold out or not, but they're choosing not to show you, which is really strange because on site, if you could still register for events on site, then they have the technology to know which ones they could still sell you tickets for, which makes us planning ahead for Origins really, I mean, not terrible, but you know, if you were excited about, say there's like a Harry Potter event or some sort of LARP in the system and you're really excited to go, you don't know if it's sold out and you can buy, you cannot buy a ticket to it. So let's talk about some of the things that I guess I know do not sell out or just require generic tickets. And I wanted to tell you that the information in this video is purely relevant to 2019. Um, chances are they're working on a new system or they're moving things around or something like that. This is just how it is today right now. Some of the things that if you have a badge that you can and should do are see everything, walk around, 
there's a ton of different halls and event spaces there's always like interesting things that are going on that you can just check out especially like over in the weird miniatures gaming area they always have like a huge like a, a huge miniature boat set up for example that you can move miniatures um in around in if you wanted if you were playing that game like the miniatures area is really cool to just walk around and check out so that's really cool and impressive and some of the vendors and event booths have some really cool displays that are really cool i recommend checking those out then of course the next thing that you should be checking out is the vendor hall you can actually spend a lot of time in there especially if you go booth by booth and they will all be offering free not all but a lot of them will be offering free game demos so you can just spend all day all weekend or or just as many days but you can spend your whole time in the vendor hall just demoing game after game after game and each vendor is going to probably be demoing several games and some of them even then choose to demo different games on different days as well so every day you go back to the vendor hall it might be something different so vendor hall if you don't have tickets and maybe you can't afford tickets to more events is a free way to engage with a whole bunch of new games that have just been released um, have expansions are just about to come out uh, or are coming out in the future at some point so money saver right there people there to teach you and a lot of the time the people the random strangers that get pulled into the demo with you become people that you interact with make friends with maybe they're going to do something else and you can tag along with them as i said for me it's a lot about friendshiping and making connections with people my schedule isn't tight so i'm open to doing those kinds of things so i guess my advice for origins is go with a really open mind do not have your heart really set on one event or one thing or an intense schedule Really just try to go with an open mind and see what happens at Origins. Next thing I would do is uh, when you get on site is buy a fistful of generic tickets. Um, in the past those have been um, kind of look like poker chips, which are really cool. I don't know if they still do, but that was a really neat thing. Each generic equals $2 of Origins uh, Zoobly Zoo money. And you can use those to get into events that haven't sold out. I bet there's also a way on site to buy tickets to events that haven't sold out, but generics don't require you to, don't require to commit to an event necessarily. So with generics, you can just do whatever you want and spend them on events. And um, some events that you might want to check out are um, out in the hallway usually, and um, they move around a little bit, are the Battletech pods, which are really cool. They're just, I mean, it, you know the video game Battletech. Battletech pods have these pods that you sit inside to play Battletech against all the other people in their pods. And it's kind of, it's a really cool, like, like, con. Like, you can't do that everywhere. It's a really neat way to play the game. And then people outside of the pods, they have a big projector with the screen set up where you can watch people play Battletech pods. That's a really cool thing that I recommend trying out. The other thing that you can try out is buy tickets to Games On Demand. Games On Demand should be running all weekend at Origins. And essentially you show up and you figure out what games people are going to be running for that session or what games people are choosing that they would like to play during a given session. Pay your generic and go ahead and play with those people. You don't really, there's no set schedule for Games On Demand. Things just kind of out of a collaborative process happen and people decide together what's going to be played next and that is the coolest way to make friends it's the coolest way to f like wing a convention and a lot of the time you get exposed to things that you never really have thought about trying before it's just that happened to be the luck of the draw and that is the game that people chose to to play that session so i don't know Games on Event is a really cool thing and I know the people that run it and they do a really wonderful job so you should try out Games on Demand. Then uh, let me think, oh you can, usually there was the speed painting competition but I don't think Reaper is here this year so what you can do is the paint and take. There's an area set up in either the vendor hall or one of the event halls where you can paint your own miniature 
and then you can take it home with you and really you just get like a ticket for a session and the first session you do for paint and take is free and the next one costs one or two generics something like that and you can just sit there and paint your mini they usually have a volunteer that walks around to help people figure out how to actually paint a miniature if you know to paint miniatures it's a really like stress-free uh, pressure-free environment to kind of get your your hands dirty and just try it for the first time and also if you do like painting minis they have very basic colors you have like you've got black white red blue green and yellow or something like that but for me painting minis is really meditative and I could just spend like an hour there just kind of sitting down I'm only doing this one thing it's repetitive I know what it is there's no rushing I'm just everything goes a little quiet and I just sit there and focus on this miniature that's what I use that for let me think what else do I know you can do at origins oh you could buy a board gamer ribbon which is a ribbon for the board game library if you have a, your badge for origins ribbons kind of stick onto the badge uh, I know you can get a board game ribbon which I think is 30 bucks no 20 i think it's 20 bucks and it just gets you into the board game library the library is huge and not usually completely full and all weekend you can just make friends go to the library play any game that they have and that library has got to have like 5000 board games in it maybe it's got a lot it's got pretty much everything that you might want Granted, a lot of other people are also playing in there, so if you really want Terraforming Mars or Catan or some game that's really popular, there might be a wait for it. It might be gone already, but yeah, $20 and you can play any game you want at any time, really. I'm not sure if it's 24-7. Um, I know that the board game library is open before I get there. It closes after I leave, so... It's open a long time. It's a great way to meet people. A lot of people, I mean, I don't know if they have this at this con, but I hope they do where it's like a little stand that's like player looking for players. You should also, you should also check out the anime section of um, Origins. A lot of it is free. I know they have like a manga library and anime viewing rooms. I know those events are usually free you can just walk into those rooms zone out and watch some stuff for a little while which i have done especially like the last days of the con where i just need to sit down and like have entertainment come to me but uh, in addition to that i think they usually have like a really cute maid cafe it's super cute they like do a little performance and they dance and you get a snack and a drink um i don't know if they're doing that here but if they are i ha i like that that's really fun then they do um, they do a bunch of panels that are great. If you're not into anime, checking those panels out is a really good idea. Um, I have ran for them before the um, Paint Your Own My Little Pony event, which is really fun. I think that one costs like 15, 10, 15, 20 bucks, but they give you like a blank canvas of a My Little Pony and you can make it whatever you want. And I usually do like Wonder Woman or, some overwatch character with it it's just a really silly event and you get to take your my little pony home with you i have a couple on my shelf let me grab some so i grabbed them because i think they're cute and i worked really really hard on them so here is one i made for my husband i don't know if you can guess it it's not the best but it is um <laughs> it's a wolverine my little pony my husband derek is really into x-men especially wolverine so i did that one I didn't even put rhinestones on her, but uh, my little Wonder Woman, my little pony, I did this one. I, I recommend going into this workshop with a little bit of inspiration first, because when you go in cold, it's a little overwhelming with all the colors and rhinestones and glitter. Uh, her hair is still tied up. Uh, bonus points if you can guess what this one is. Can you guess? This is May from Overwatch. Wow, her hair is curling now. I just had to tie it up in a bow because May's hair is usually tied up in a little bow. And then we have the Kamala Khan um, Miss Marvel. So yeah, I made, I've done this workshop four times now and I can attest that it is a lot of fun. It's silly and everybody's welcome and it doesn't matter how good or bad you are at painting. Who cares? It's just a stupid, fun event. 
And the last things that I can think of are not origin specific like event things. Um, explore the area is my next advice. Connected to the actual convention center, if you walk all the way to the end of it, is the Hyatt. And what connects the Hyatt to the convention center is the Hyatt's bar called the Big Bar on Two. And everybody goes there. All of the people that attend the con hang out there like all day. Um, game designers, publishers, distributors, everybody that you can think of just hangs out on the big bar on two the entire convention that's the place to be to network to hang out to see people their beverages are pretty good like their food is good they've got pretty good drinks a second last there's also another thing north market north market is like a food market an indoor food market across the street from the convention center and it's it's really sweet. I mean, they've got a really great ice cream place. They've got a cheese plate, a sausage place, a um, place where you can buy knickknacks, different variety of food stands. Um, it gets really busy during the con. Like there's gonna be lines and it's hard to move through. Regardless, it is just the best way to, for everybody in your group, if you are with a group, just to get a variety of food and you can still eat together. If you go upstairs, there are there's a seating area around there and um, there's a there's like a pretzel place there that i really like and there's pretzel blah, blah, blah. And there's special pretzel that i got there last year it was some sort of a sweeter sweeter pretzel and it was covered in fruity pebbles with a like a vanilla icing dip it's ridiculous and i really really i just really like walking around there to see what they have available and then lastly what should you do at origins if you go this year and some of the years before because the dates worked out is go to pride pride is on usually during origins the dates coincide with the pride festival and it's sort of just ugh. it is so cool for the people of for the people of columbus ohio to all dress up get really passionate and be really proud of who they are and really represent ohio in Columbus in such a positive, fun, energetic way. Like the floats, is that what they're called? The like things with the car and the decorations and the, the energy and the way people are dressed up is amazing. And it goes right past to the, the front of the convention center and a lot of people will cut through the convention center so you can see them, but it's like an hour long, just hang out. It's so fun to see those costumes. It's just, that energy is amazing and every year, I, our, our hotel room, our friend's hotel room will always overlook it. So we always gather in one person's hotel room and like overlook the whole thing of Pride. It's a lot of fun and I really recommend it. And it's going to be on this week. I don't know what day. Don't ask me. Saturday. I think it's on Saturday. Maybe it's Sunday. I don't know. And I bet, I bet that there is more stuff that I can't think of right now that you could do. There's still a bunch of events. This is just a short list of the things that I could think of at the top of my head because those are the things that I've engaged in in the past. It'll be the best time. Try to make friends, have an open mind. And uh, I will see you at Origins if you make it. And if you don't make it to Origins, but make it to Gen Con, then I will see you there. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.